<coughs> Good morning. Sorry about the way the picture looks because my phone is broken. But it is what it is. Now listen. I'm going to keep harping on this because it's 100 uh, because my faith in the in the scriptures is is uh like a mountain. I believe everything. I know what God has said to me, I know what God has shown me, and there's then there's various things I'm going to approach right now because people just aren't listening. You who are woken up, you whatever you want to call it, the Torah movement, the following the way, many of you are called and only few of you are chosen. This is a real warning. This is about the first fruits. When you understand prophecy, you can see what everybody's doing. So I'm talking about the difference between the evil and the wise servants right now, okay? It's a real thing, so get used to it. If you want to go down the path of the evil, you're going to go to the right or the left. You're supposed to know. You are, this is what's going on with people. And I know, I know exactly what's going on because God put me through it in order for me to have the wisdom enough to explain this to you. When people go to the right or the left, and I'm going to speak first about the right. What happens to them? So I'm going to use my own story to, to let you know. First of all, you can believe it or not, but God asked me to be a watchman. He raised me up to be a watchman. Okay, this is the porter in the gate. And what I say unto the porter, I, when I command the porter, I command all of you, watch. You are all commanded to become watchmen. He raises up guys that know what, what are go, what's going on for your sake, but you're supposed to do the same thing that they're doing, okay? By example, so he does this. This is prophecy. You're foolish to ignore this. If you want to believe all this stuff about the calendar and the book of Enoch and Jubilees and, and uh, whatever, if you can't see the bullseye of the instruction, you're going to fail. You will 100% fail because you're ignoring prophecy. If you go to the left, like many people will do, you are going to fail. You need to stay down that narrow path. What's the narrow path? I don't know how many times I have to explain to people about the unjust steward, but that's who he's talking to. He is going to take you from your stewardhood because of your error in rejecting prophecy. You go to Revelation, and you understand that that book is written to those who do the things written therein. Anybody who adds or takes away from the prophecies of that book, what's going to happen to them? Did you think that Yeshua was joking about that? No, he wasn't. So, some of us understand what's going on. This goes from right and left. So I'll give you extreme extreme levels of right and left. Tim Foster, he's remaining on the left. Adam from Parable of the Vineyard, far right. Why are they doing it? Because they're not listening to the prophecies of the book. You know what happens to these guys? You know what happens to them? When they read the Bible, they're blessing themselves. They're like, they're thinking, me, 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 me instead of concerning themselves with the people. So what ends up happening to them? They cast stumbling blocks in front of other people. That's what it means to scatter God's goods. Wasting his goods, scatter his goods. That's what they're doing. It doesn't matter. They're going to the right and the left. This is why Galatians talks about two different stumbling blocks. Galatians is where you need to understand this. And I'll tell you, if you go to the right or the left, you are not part of New Jerusalem. So take, take heed to what I'm saying to you right now. So what happens to people on the right is they start going after the calendar. Why do I know this? Because I already went through it. I went through it. I went through all of that stuff many years ago. I read the book of Enoch in 2007. Okay? I went through the, the Job type chastisement. That's what made me wise. That's, I had to go through this stuff. Then he asked me to be a watchman eventually. Finally. And then my chastisement was over. So he put the wisdom of his word and understanding prophecy. What does it say? Those who do the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua, which is what? 
the spirit of prophecy. So therefore, you better know what prof the prophets are saying. A, a man asked me today, well, where does it say that you enter into the work of the prophets? Yeshua tells you this. So you better be listening to Yeshua. So you better take it seriously because he's talking to the watchman. You don't know how much is talking about those of you guys who have been raised up first. Many are called and few are chosen. There's a reason for that because you're not going to listen. There's more people won't listen out of the first calling than that will. And this is because you've been put, it's been put, a higher calling has been put on you. So you better take it seriously because those who become evil servants go where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay? You're going to get the same punishment as the pastors. And you know why? Because you're not, you're not listening to who's even your authority. He told you, I'm going to raise up watchmen. He raises them up that are going to understand and then they're going to bring other people to be watchmen. That's the point. We're all a team. These guys aren't trying to rule over you. They're trying to save you from the prophecy against you. That's what they're doing. And I've seen many, many, many people stumble and fall in this so-called Torah movement. And it's not just the Torah movement. There's guys that just will not give up their wife, their, their, their husband, their, their mother, their, their, their daughter, their child. They won't give, them, give, give that stuff up because they, they want to remain on the left. Okay? A good example of that is a man named Tim Foster. He's an amazing guy. I love him with all my heart. He doesn't know me. Well, he's, he's interacted with me a very little bit because he won't listen. He will not listen to what he was called to do. He just made a, a post today on his YouTube channel. You're all welcome to go and, and, and read it. He's talking about the watchman, but he refuses to see what prophecy says to warn the people about. So why, what's he doing? He, he can't get over the fact that the church is apostate and they need to hear the truth. God has appointed those of the northern kingdom of Israel by election that are going to rise, and Judah, that are going to rise up out of the ways the Chaldeans have deceived the whole entire world, which is in prophecy. And they can't understand that is Isaiah chapter 47 and 48 is quoting or is being quoted in Revelation 17 and 18. They got to get over that cognitive dissonance, which is of your father, the devil, and you got to understand God's way. That's going to the far left what they're doing. So they're not telling the people the truth. On the right, they're putting all this extra burden on people because they think for some reason that being a watchman means that they're going to understand the calendar. When prophecy tells you, no, you won't, it was used so that you came to the point where that you where you uh, warn the people, quickly write a check for half. This is what we owe the Lord. He made provisions in his law and in his prophets for what the northern kingdom and Judah must do in order to be saved. Oh, that's works-based salvation. Those are the people that are going into the pit because they're twisting and perverting the words of God. There is so much written about all different kinds of people. Those are your Wolves in the church and the hirelings. But what about the people that are appointed to become watchmen? What about them? What I say to the porter, I say to all of you, watch. That means you better understand what prophecy says and go fulfill the royal law and quit putting stumbling blocks in front of people. I don't know. There's some people I know, and I am specifically making this video for people that I know. Whether they hear or whether they forbear, they don't even know. You see, in it, because they won't listen. You know why? Because it, deep in their heart, all they're thinking about is themselves. They think that they're going to figure out the feasts and the calendar or the Paleo-Hebrew or all this nonsense when all it was, that was meant for them to come to the conclusion, to come to the conclusion, to go and warn the people to quickly repent and keep the Holy Covenants of Promise. Judah, you have more for you against you because... You're, you're already returned to your inheritance. You are polluting the Sabbath. It doesn't be, it, the Sabbath does not begin on Friday evening. That's Babylon. That's the Chaldeans. You better pay attention to that. That's one of your stumbling blocks because you, you're caught up in the traditions of men. But Christian church, so are you. Big time. But treacherous Judah is worse than backsliding Israel. Backsliding Israel is the church. Treacherous Judah 
saw what happened to backsliding Israel, and they went about doing their same garbage themselves after seeing the fall of the northern kingdom. So you got to get out of the right and get out of the left. Listen to this. This is end days prophecy happening right now. And the people shall dwell at Zion and Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. <sighs> he will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he, when he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord gave thee the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall, shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. But your uh, the eyes, but thy eyes, your eyes, shall see your teachers, and your ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Quit doing it. Quit being legalistic. Quit being selfish. That's what you're doing. Okay, I'll tell you something. Here's your clue. Understand what the watchmen are going to do. That goes to the right and to the left. There are so many people being woken up right now, and it's been going on for years. And that's why you have the parable of the 11th hour harvest workers. The last will be first. So if you don't want to listen to the parables, you're in a boatload of trouble if you're one of these people woken up already. Tim, Tim Foster, if you ever watch this video, you got to get out of the left. You need to start warning those people. That's what a watchman does. He warns them of repentance. They are stiff-necked people and you're acting the same way you are not following yeshua you're following the christmas jesus guy because you do not have the love of god in you which is to keep his holy covenant and to tell the people the truth that's what watchmen do you guys on the right telling people to do the feasts you're not allowed to do the feasts until you return to the land you're not making difference between the profane and the holy read the difference there's so much scripture about this in prophecy. That's why I'm telling you this. Because you guys are a bunch of stiff-necked people down in America. He told you he's going to raise a watchman from the north to warn you. This is so you wake up. Do you not believe your Bible? Quit casting stumbling blocks in front of your own people. I say, I said it on a video. I care about your children more than you do. You wicked church. Do you not believe prophecy? The whole Christian church in Judah does not believe prophecy. Oh, shalom, shalom. And there is no shalom to the wicked. You know what the wicked do? They don't worship in spirit and in truth. So what do they do? They do exactly what the Bible says they're going to do. They start casting stumbling blocks in front of the people. You better pay attention that Isaiah 28 to 33 is all talking about you guys. That's where the... You guys are mystery Babylon, and you're, the firstborn is Ephraim, and only a, a remnant of you guys are going to be saved. And the remnant that's going to be saved is already described in this book. So you better pay attention to what the book says. There's, what, 400 videos that I've already made warning you guys? So pay attention to what God has been doing through his servants and follow along and do the same thing. What did Paul tell you to do? Walk the way he walked as he's walking the way Yeshua walked. He told you to go warn the people. What did Paul do? He went around everywhere warning the stupid people to repent. That's what he was doing the whole time. He wasn't casting stumbling blocks in front of them. He told you not to cast stumbling blocks in front of them. Your own ideas. How foolish. There's guys like Nick Vanderland. You've been woken up for a long time and you haven't figured this out yet? You're still stumbling over the calendar yourself? You foolish man. You're casting stumbling blocks in front of the children of Israel. Unbelievable. You can't see prophecy, you guys. Adam from Parable of the Vineyard. You're doing the same thing. Not only that, you're making merchandise of God's people. You're, you're a prophet for hire causing them to pay you money so that you can do these abominable feasts that are not on a holy day. You can't make difference between the profane and the holy. Look at Ezekiel 22 and Ezekiel 44 because you're being spoken of right there. It's wickedness. Wickedness. 
to go get the wagon ahead of the horse. What's the great transgression? Presumptuousness. Keep your servant from presumptuous sins. The great transgression. You're foolish for not listening to what the prophet said. You're foolish to not even know that there's going to be a watchman from the north warning you. Do you not even understand that you're mystery Babylon, you watchmen out there? You dumb dogs that can't bark? His watchmen. Who's his? The eunuch. The eunuch's watchmen are dumb dogs that cannot bark. You don't know the truth. Oh, you've been shown things, and then you've been unjust with, with your father's goods, his children, his people. You were raised to warn them the simple truth. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Keep the holy covenants of promise and allow them to have the Holy Spirit. You already know, all of you, all the disputing and wickedness. Oh, it's this calendar. Oh, it's this calendar. Oh, it's, of course it's going to be like that because you're stupid. You're not listening. God is going to restore his calendar when he chose, chooses to do so. When the second exodus takes place, he's going to restore his kingdom, you dummies. He told you, don't just do every man what is right in his own eyes. That's why the Holy Spirit's going to be withdrawn from you. You were warned. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 3, verses 25 to 31. You're, you're going to be done. Your stewardhood is going to get taken away from you because you were unjust. <clears throat> You scattered his people. That's what you did. You're living in the, the church age is over. It's done. The fullness of the Gentiles comes in and the northern kingdom of Israel starts to wake up. That's what you're doing. But <coughs> out of all of you, many are called and few are chosen because they're not listening to the full instruction of God. He made it very easy for you guys to go reach the Jewish and Christian people. Quickly write a check for half. Quickly write a check for 80. And what do you do it? You're putting things on the people that, they, oh, the feasts are forever. If you live in the kingdom, you dummy. That's what you're doing. And then you're causing the Christians to stumble. They're not coming to the truth because they see your wickedness. And vice versa. The, the true, the true first fruits that are going to make it want the truth. They want the truth. In fact, here's your, here's your prophecy. Those who obey the things in the book of Revelation, those who obey what the prophecy, prophecy says. Do you have a white stone? Do you have the day dawning in your heart? I know you don't, Adam, from Parable of the Vineyard. You're still doing the Babylonian Sabbath that they even proclaimed that they changed it. So you're casting a stumbling block in front of all those people. You're being a wicked man right now. You should have known this. You've been studying this long enough. I've watched you from the beginning. God told me to watch you. You're going to help Judah or you're going to destroy Judah, Adam. It's up to you. And all those people you've misled into going to the right, you're going to be held accountable for this as Ezekiel 34 said. It'll be required of you. And that goes for all of you that are doing that. You are not making difference between the holy and profane. And that's why you don't have the key of David. Those who have the key of David, a, a nail in a sure place. That's the bond servant. The bond servant's going to understand revelation. The prophecies of that book. How come you don't have the key of David? All of you that I'm talking to, whether it's the right or the left. Tim Foster, how come you don't hold the key of David and I do? Do you want it? Because you're not going to ever get, you're not going to receive it in your heart unless you get onto that straight and narrow path. Get off the left and get off the right and let God wake up the people through your mouth to the truth, not to your lies, not to your compromise. And that goes for you guys on the right. You're going to the right. You're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. The pearl in the field is the white stone. There's a reason. I have the white stone. And you know what it says? I'll show you. Because it's relevant to what I'm talking about right now. And those who are wise will sell everything and they'll go and buy that stone.
And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children and let him be acceptable to his brethren. Do you understand what I just said to you? You guys aren't going to accept me. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. If you do not listen to what I'm telling you right now, you're going to stumble and fall. And let him deep dip his feet in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Where do you hear that? What's the brass? You want to go to Malachi chapter, chapter uh, 4? The, they're going to come out of the stalls. And they're going to trample the tares. What does it say? Revelation chapter 10. Verses 9, 9 to 11 tells you that the Ezekiel watchman is John. John is Asher. Like, do you need people to tell you that? You guys in the Torah movement, do you not understand prophecy? Did you not think that there's... Oh, I will not, I will not have this man over me, it says in, 11, in, in uh, Luke chapter 19. Like, you guys don't understand the parables? Do you not understand the parables of all the evil servants that are going to cast stumbling blocks? Look what you guys are creating. You're actually creating it. You're going to start to smite your fellow servants. It's already been happening. You guys have seen it for such a long time. It's because of you. Because you're not listening. You're not telling. You're the unjust steward. And you need to repent. Those are going to be wiser than the children of light. You guys should all know in the right what the children of light are. So how, what makes you wiser than the children of light? Because you're the very elect in the last days and your stewardship's going to be taken away from you if you don't make the right changes and tell the people the truth because you're scattering God's sheep. That's what you're doing. And you're influencing even some of the brothers in my group, you knuckleheads. Nick Vanderland, Adam from Parable the Vineyard. You're not listening. It's gone to your head. It's gone to your head. And Tim Foster, you're still on the left. You need to get on the path too. So you guys are living examples for everybody to see. You're an error. Because you're being selfish. Because pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, you're going to go back under what they're doing. It's not talking about wine. You know what it is? It's the chapter before. The vine, the new song of Moses, the vine of Sodom. That's the drunkards of Ephraim. Now, all you guys that are watching this channel, I'm not, this is, this is, this is not necessarily against you guys. The guys that are watching live. Well, some of them are watching live because they're already fallen and what they're doing is they're laying a snare and they're, they're doing everything the book says. I already know that. I deal with it. I have my own group of people that I've heavily influenced in the truth and they're doing exactly what I'm against what I'm saying right now as well. They've been doing it for years. But those of you who are waking up, you're called to be the, you're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You're not going to listen to the, the wolves and the, and the hirelings in the churches. You're the second sheepfold and make yourself ready and clean your robes. You want to be accounted worthy to escape all these things coming upon the earth? then that's what you got to do. This is what's going on. And these men, and I, there's many other men I can mention that are public figures even, okay? They're not telling you the full truth. They're, they're, they're casting stumbling blocks because of the pride of America. That's the way they think over there. They're not thinking like the Bible. They read it. I know these guys, some of them, all of them. In fact, like Tim Foster even made a, a, a thing today. He's been woken up since 2014. Then catch up, buddy. Because you're acting like I did in 2016 still. You didn't come to repentance yet. You're not telling the people to quickly repent. Go and learn that, that the watchman of Ephraim is going to warn the people to repent and turn back to the Holy Covenant. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. How foolish are you? You sit there talking all the time about prophecy, but you can't even understand that you have to repent yourself. Repent. Why do you think in Mark 1, they stopped working and they forsook everything to follow Yeshua on the Sabbath day? And he went into 
Capernaum and immediately started preaching with authority. They forsook everything. They had hired servants. They were working with their father. They were mending their nets. They were mending their boats and they stopped working because they were breaking the Sabbath and Yeshua told them to stop. That's how foolish deaf ears are. You need to take the earplugs out of your, out of your ears. Tell the people to follow the covenant so, why? So that they can receive the Holy Spirit of truth. So that they can receive the Holy Spirit of truth. You guys are being selfish. When people, when you tell them errors and you've been appointed to be leaders and you won't even repent your own self, that goes both ways. You know, you should know what Isaiah 43 says, you guys on the right. I have not made the northern kingdom of Israel serve him with the feasts. But what are they doing? They're doing these abominations of Christmas and Easter. That's what they're doing. Isaiah 43. What in the world is Isaiah talking about? He didn't make them follow the feasts. Why? Because, they, because of the Torah. Deuteronomy 12 and 16 tells you, you're going to get kicked out of the land. That's what the book's context is. And don't do these feasts until they are sanctified where I put my name in the city of your inheritance. Are you so stupid to think that you can trample the word of God and, for, and, and enforce these feasts that are, are, are not sanctified, doing them on a profane day, saying, oh, well, God sees our heart. Yeah, he does see your heart. He sees your heart's rebellious and won't listen to him. So you better quickly. You're going to get removed. I'm warning you right now. You will be re re removed from your stewardship. What does it say right after? The unjust steward goes right into the reason why. Because you're worshiping the mammon still. You're, you're unfaithful with the mammon. You're, you, you, Adam, specifically, are charging people to sin. You're charging them 100 bucks a ticket to do something that's profane. You better pay attention to what I'm saying to you because you're acting like a punk right now. You're rebellious and you think you're a know-it-all and you don't know it all. I will raise one up from the north. Where are you? You're down south. I'm warning you. I'm telling you, Mystery Babylon, you're in a lot of trouble. You want to return back to the drunkards of Ephraim? Because that's what you're doing. Ezekiel 22, Ezekiel 44. Those of us who understand that will, will be the ones doing the feasts where it's, where it's holy and sanctified. You guys in Ezekiel 22 are doing it all wrong right now because you're not listening to the full instruction of God. You're not listening to the second instruction in Deuteronomy. You're not listening to that. You think, oh, you can just take the word of God however you feel. Presumption. Yeah, the great transgression against the servants. I told you, I've, I've warned you. <clears throat> I've warned you. I've warned Nick Vanderland publicly. I've warned Adam from Parable of the Vineyard publicly. And I've warned Tim publicly. All of you guys. Anybody who's like that, take the same warning. Because you're not out of the hot water either. That's why Asher will have many children. That's the promise to Asher. So you better believe it. How come there's going to be many children? Because quickly write a check because he's wiser than the children or the children of light. He's wiser in that generation than the children of light. Not for his sake only, for all of your sake. Quickly, keep the covenants of promise. Wait, you're going into the second exodus if you do this. And you will prevail. You will make it to the end if you're obedient. Do not be rebellious because he's going to purge out the tares first that wouldn't listen to the full instruction of God. They start smiting their fellow servants because they don't know what the Bible says. They go so far, some of these guys. They get jealous and envious. I'm telling you, it's happening right now because they're not listening and they're not convicted. They lose the conviction. The Holy Spirit of grace is conviction. They lose their saltiness and they get to go in the fire. There's my own personal brothers I have to deal with this too. So, but my loyalty is to, to the father who bought me with a price. 
to tell the truth to his chosen children. It's almost like this. People don't get it. You're, much of you are destined for hell. Why? Because you just won't listen to Papa. That goes across the board. The Jewish church, the Christian church. The reason why all the prophecies against the United States of America is because you guys were all wicked with the, and perverted the words of the living God. So he's giving you a bone. And you're not going to, most of you aren't going to accept that bone because you want some guy in cufflinks in the suit to tell you what to do because you're so used to worshiping people. This guy, who's he? He doesn't even look like a prophet. That's because the prophets are already done. You enter into the work of the prophets, reap what they sow, and together you will rejoice. John 4. Well, how come all these servants don't understand prophecy about the evil servants then? You ask yourself that, you guys. Those of you who are poor in the word that need to hear, you want to hear, that's what's going on right now. You guys will be saved. Those of you who are poor, you know that already because the Bible told you that. The poor will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. What are the meek? They're meek in God's wisdom. Meekness is God's wisdom. That's what it is. You see, they want, the, the wicked church doesn't interpret the, the Bible properly because they don't have ears to hear. They don't. Moses was the meekest man of all. Well, was he meek according to the way American snowflakes call meekness? Nope. Not even close. He was leading millions of people and going up against them daily because they're a bunch of stiff neck idiots that don't want to listen to God. I mean, for crying out loud, they saw the fire come right over, right over the mountain. They saw the ocean part in, in half to, to allow them to escape from the Egyptians. They saw the pillar of smoke and the pillar of, of fire and they still murmured and complained. That's how stupid people are. They still didn't believe God. He tells them, make no graven image when they're at Horeb. So they walk all the way to Sinai after they receive the verbal contract with their father. And they still go ahead and make a graven image. Like, how dumb is that? Pretty dumb, isn't it? Well, that shows you how dumb we are for not listening to God. Like their punishment isn't going to happen. You think that you Christians that are listening to this, you think when all the prophecies against you for making a graven image, that that Christmas tree is allowed into your houses and you're lying to your children. Do you know what it says about you guys? Your children are even going to get dashed to pieces right in front of your faces. Your wives will be ravished and you men are going to die by the sword. You don't believe that because you've been living in entitlement and pride for, for generation on top of generation, thinking that you are the champions of the world. That's your pride. And for that reason, you're getting destroyed by the hand of God, by his word. So those who repent are called the remnant of Joseph or the remnant of Ephraim. So that's why we tell the truth. Guess what? The, the story's already over. We might be living in a, a moment right now, but the story's already over. I already know all I have to do is keep doing this and they're going to hear. I have no control over it, but God already told me. I keep preaching, they're going to hear. The ones that are chosen. So, Adam from Parable of the Vineyard, are you chosen? Or are you going to be one of the evil servants? Nick Vanderland, are you going to hear? Or are you going to be one of the evil servants? Because there's more evil servants than good. Many more. Many are called and only few are chosen. You see what happens with these guys is they're not listening to the, the, all the prophecy. So they take for granted. They, get a, they also feel entitled. They sit there reading their, their removed books and the Torah and the prophets, but it goes right over their head what's written against themselves. That's how intricate the word of God is. Many are called, few are chosen out of the servanthood. And the servants that are kicked out get to go hang out with the, the hypocrites where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So why do I warn them? Because I love them. You see, these guys are powerful men that I'm talking about. Tim is a powerful man. He's a good man too in his nature, his, his nature of caring for the people. But if he, if he wants to do it his way and not God's way, he's not listening to Isaiah 5, uh, 55, is he? My ways are higher than yours, Tim. That's what God says. So you better pay attention to that because like 
The Jews don't listen to Isaiah 53 to 56, neither do the Christians. Isaiah 53 to 56 is what Philip read to the Ethiopian eunuch, which was a Gentile, which caused him to repent and keep the Ten Commandments, and he was going to get given a name to him even greater than if he were born blood sons and daughters. And that eunuch is the key of David, by the way. It has everything to do with the key of David, and it goes right into proclaiming all of you guys who are dumb dogs that cannot bark. And you know why? A lot of you, because you're still tolerating that woman Jezebel. That, that gentleness. The shalom, shalom. That's not what you're, that's not described in scripture. You're taking that out of context. Now you don't go stone people anymore. You don't go beat them with, with a, a staff. No, you rebuke sharply, especially you and Judah especially the fables coming out of the Chaldeans. Mystery Babylon is coming, is, is, is a, a product of the Babylonian Jews, which are called the evil family. And that's what's going on. Wickedness. You know why? Because you don't listen to prophecy. The chosen servants listen to prophecy. That's who, the, that's who the book of Revelation is written to. So the sign is, you've been woken up for so long and you still don't understand the key of David, you got a problem. Because it's those who... You know it's dumb about the ones that smite their fellow servants? They will not have that guy rule over them. They don't understand nothing. They don't understand nothing that the Messiah was talking about how the end days are going down. And that's why, that's why Ezekiel uh, 33 was written, you know. The revelation of Yeshua Messiah, which God gave unto them to show unto his servants, his bond servants, those who are a sure place, a sure thing in the gate, a nail in the, in the gate, rebuking, rebuking in the gate, the truth, trustworthy words, not, not their own desires, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent it and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the, of the word of God and the testimony of Yeshua Messiah, which is the spirit of prophecy. And of all things that he saw, blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. So when the time is at hand, the key of David is going to be known. It's called the key of David because David had the key of David. Because he knew the law better than his, his rabbis knew it. Psalm 119, 99 and 100. That's what the key, the key of David is the knowledge of God. That's why he says, when he, when he told the Pharisees that they would have never accused his disciples of breaking the Sabbath, he tells them, if you knew what this meant, I prefer mercy, not sacrifice, you would have never done this. Because the knowledge of God is important. And having the knowledge of God, he reveals to you the key of David. And the, the knowledge of God is the fruits of the Spirit. And you're going you're gonna to fulfill the royal law. You're not going to cast stumbling blocks don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. This is the path. Walk ye in it. The narrow way. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. People will say, well, how come they were doing the feasts in the New Testament? Because they had their inheritance. Put your ears on. Those who hear. Well, what's, the, what's it saying here? What's one of the prophecies? One of the prophecies is that John's going to prophesy again in front of many tongues, nations, and kings. Eat the little roll. It's sweet in his mouth, bitter in his belly. If Ezekiel chapter two and three, the book of warning, lamentation, and woe. They go and warn my people. They're all going to speak English. This is to you, Paleo Hebrew um, narcissists, word police. You cast stumbling blocks like nobody's business. The lost sheep of the house of Israel are all going to speak the same language, and it ain't Paleo Hebrew, and that's the. It's forbidden for you, actually, because the pure language God's going to put into the people's mouths. 
So when you're out there trying to correct everybody, you're casting a stumbling block in front of people. And you're too stupid to even know that because you're not listening. Why? Because of your own entitlement. Because somehow in your wicked heart, you think that if you speak Paleo-Hebrew, you've got it all figured out. No, you just did the opposite. In fact, you're closing the, the ears of people. Like I talked to one sister, she doesn't even like the, name, the word Torah. And I understand exactly why. Because it causes people, they don't know what it means. And you just sit there all the time, pumping yourself up in front of everybody, rather than opening up the ears. That's why I always call, many times when I talk about the Torah, it's the instruction of God. His whole Bible is his instruction. These guys, because they're so um, narrow-minded in their thinking, that's why they can't hear prophecy. They can't see that the, all the prophets were explaining the Torah. And better yet, the apostles and Yeshua even explained the prophets and the Torah. It's, a, it's amazing. But that means the whole book is the Torah. But they want to have this definitive thing and, and puff themselves up. Oh, we keep the Torah. You don't even keep the Torah. You're by the letter. Don't go to the right, you dummies. You were told about that. Who oh, don't call me dumb. That's not very gentle. Shalom, shalom. There is no shalom for the wicked. You want to cast stumbling blocks in front of people? You're going to be done and you're going to see the error of your ways. <clears throat> Buckle up. Many are called and few are chosen. You guys aren't fulfilling the royal law. You're not sharply rebuking the fables out of your churches and synagogues. And believe you me, there are many. Because your Bible told you, come out of her, my people. Well, who's he specifically talking to in Isaiah when he says that? To Judah. What did Judah do? They went and made many harlots. They infiltrated everybody. That's why even the Freemasons go off cabalism. It's part of their thing. Well, all that Talmudic stuff, the traditions of men, it's both sides. What you're finding yourself right now, by the way, doing the feasts on the wrong day, can you not read Jubilees chapter 6? Can you not understand it? Can you not make difference between the profane and the holy? You guys just walk, even though you've read it and you know it, you still do it anyway? You're not in the land. It's profane. You're in the wilderness. You're cast out into the peoples. You're not returned to the holy place. God's name is not in your city. And that's why you guys are casting stumbling blocks, thinking that somehow you're justified because you keep the feasts. You're keeping a profane feast. That's why Isaiah chapter, well, this is, I'll prove it to you right now. All end days prophecy. Chapter two of Isaiah tells you about the kingdom returning. Isaiah chapter one talks all about you guys doing these feasts the way you're doing them. And even your Sabbath day is perverted and it's abomination to God because it's Babylonian. You can take the log out of your own eye. You have no problem rebuking the Christians about Christmas and Easter. But look at what it says against you. Hear ye the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. This is talking to Judah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings. I prefer mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Dummies. Burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When you come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot, away, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you make my, many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. You're full of blood because you're doing things on a profane day. You wicked nation. And you just, you guys should know better that, that have woken up to follow the ways of Yah. You're not listening. 
That's why Isaiah 66 repeats it. Because this is the difference between me and you and my brothers that make it. Thus says the Lord, the heavens and the earth are my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all these things has my hand made. <clears throat> and all these things have been, said the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit that trembles at my word. He that kills an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth a vein, uh, an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he, blah, 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 as if he, if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations. Isaiah 1, Isaiah 66, beginning in the end. I also will choose their delusions and I will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. And when I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that which I delighted not. Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at the word, your brethren that hated you and cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. And it goes on to tell you about what? The man child being caught up to the throne. Next thing. Bada bing, bada boom. And that's the end of the story. So who are these guys doing this? The sacrifices of God on a profane day. And putting stumbling blocks in front of the people that I love. That's what you're supposed to be like. You're supposed, the wicked I don't love. The chosen people that are going to make it and repent is who I love. So if it happens to be my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my child, they don't love God, I follow God. Unless you hate them and love me. That's what he says. But that's what people can't do. And they don't understand that even for his servant's sake, there is a remnant going to be saved because his servants pray, which is in the chapter before, and say, don't destroy them all. There's still some good in them. So for, his, for the servants who do that, he is going to save those. But I'll tell you, the wicked, the wicked, the wicked shepherds, is he, after the watchman warns them, oh, they sit before your feet as though you sing a beautiful song, but they will not do what you tell them to do well, first of all, because they won't do what God tells them to do, but they, they won't do what, what I tell them to do because their hearts go after their covetousness, which is all the pride of Ephraim, the drunk tards of Ephraim, mystery Babylon. You're going into the pit. Going into the pit. Thus says the Lord. The next chapter, Ezekiel 34. All those people that you, you lead astray, you feed yourselves. Oh yeah, you feed yourselves. Me, 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 me. I'm the chosen one. You, it tells you, you're going to count yourself to that number. Ha <laughs> ha, uh-uh. Because you're putting stumbling blocks and it will be required at your hand. All the people you mislead. Ezekiel 34. Because you went right to the right. Now you, Tim Foster, if you watch this, I'm telling you, man, you are a Christian brother. I know your pain. It took me. I trusted God when he asked me to be a watchman and he taught me by the voice of God. Taught me what it means to be a watchman. You are appointed to be a watchman. You need to warn those Christians that are following you to repent and keep the Holy Covenant. That's why the wrath of God, read Ephesians 2, the spirit of grace is conviction to obey the Holy Covenants ordained of old to those who are grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. But the church goes apostate, and then by election, these people are going to rise up, and that's why they're listening. But you got to tell them the truth, man. You got to come to repentance yourself. I know I grew up in the Baptist church, the Alliance church, non-denominational, you name it. My whole life, they lied to us, and I know that bothers you. But you're still lying to the people if you're not telling them about repentance because that's what watchmen do. They don't sit there when they see the sword coming as I do. Your mystery Babylon, the sword's coming. You need to repent. And if you don't repent, my blood is not on your, on my, your blood is not on my hands anymore because I've already warned you. You need to keep the holy covenants. That's what watchmen do. They're commanded to do this. And what I say unto the watchmen, the appointed watchmen, 
and he commanded the porter to watch, I say unto all of you, watch. That means become watchmen, fulfill the royal law, and start Stop being so selfish and go and warn the people around you, even though they're deaf and they will not hear. That's exactly what I'm dealing with right now with a bunch of you. And for five years running. That doesn't make me, I'm still going to be faithful to the end. And it you've already been told in Isaiah 62 that his watchmen are going to shout to New Jerusalem day and night, and they will not stop until New Jerusalem is a praise in all the earth. Right? Spend some time in Isaiah and listen to what's being said. Start at chapter 40 to 66. Read the whole book and put your listening ears on when, because it's happening to you all right now. You're all written in this book everywhere. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 44. This is the end. Ezekiel 22. So what you guys are doing right now on the right. Those of you on the left, better open up your ears. You Christians, you better repent from this Easter and Christmas nonsense. It's all pagan witchcraft, and it's all about child sacrifice, and that's why so many children are being murdered right now, right in your streets, because of the wicked spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah over your whole entire country, that wicked Jezebel spirit that comes from that Christmas and Easter, your pride, you guys who tolerate that Jezebel are going into the pit. You're going into that bed of suffering. You were warned in Revelation chapter 2. You tolerate her. You suffer that woman, Jezebel. Her mushy-gushy John Lennon love. Oh, be gentle. No. There's a time for everything. And right now, you better be sharply rebuking the fables out of the church. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts. I charge you before God and before the Lord Yeshua, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts. That's abominations, by the way, in Strong's Concordance. Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears? Tell me smooth things. This is quoting what I just read earlier. Go to the right, go to the left. Don't go to the right, don't go to the left. This is the path walkie in it. But they want the teachers to shut up. Tell the seers not to see. Tell us smooth things. Itch our ears. Prophesy to us deceits. Who's that nation about? You! And they shall turn away their ears from hearing the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch, and, but watch ye therefore, watchmen, but watchmen, thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of evangelism of an evangelist and make full proof of your ministry. I do that. You got 400 something videos to watch. It's not like something I said a year ago is just as relevant as what I'm saying today. In fact, as my voice increases in, in, um, what's the word? urgency you better get get ready because it's around the corner you'll see the holy covenants there it i've made one of one video is about the rainbow covenant i'm sure that i'll talk about both of them in that video the rainbow covenant is expounded of in the law um it's in uh genesis chapter the end of chapter 8 and, and chapter 9, okay? So you study that. And Moses offered clean animals, and he was told never to, never to drink the blood, okay? Well, Moses, sorry, not Moses, Noah, okay? So Noah, that covenant was made, and that God made a promise that he would never destroy the whole entire earth with a, with a flood ever again. But that doesn't mean that Ephraim's not going under, As in the days of Noah, so shall it be. See, when the devil gets cast down, it gets cast down over America. And so when you read the sixth seal, okay, and then you you under, you you got you better start learning this real quick. That 600 chapters, over 600 chapters in Revelation are quoting the Old Testament. And your wicked pastors in both the synagogues and in the churches are not telling you that that 600 chapters plus are being are being spoken of in the prophets, okay? So therefore, you're never going to understand Revelation unless you read the prophets. 
So Isaiah 28 is talking about the sixth seal. So in the end, ah, oh, there's, there's much I can say. There's so many videos. It's up to you. If you don't want to read your Bible, then go read, watch my videos. And then you're, and that's a crapshoot because I could be a big fat liar. I tell people many times in my videos, you better go read the word of God about what I'm saying because the Bereans are more noble than the Thessalonians because they search the scriptures daily to see if what Paul was saying true. Well, what are the scriptures? The Old Testament. That's what they do. Why would they do that if Paul's got some new thing? Because he had no new thing. It was the fulfillment of everything about the Messiah that he was going to do. That's why people twist the words of God right now. And that's why the whole entire church is apostate. And Judah is not out of that. Judah is not out of the apostasy. You know why? Because they're not fulfilling the royal law. You were told this, right? The Messiah told you, if you do not bear fruit, you too will be cut out. There's a, there's a parable he says, he's talking about, oh, these, these, these um, slot, was it slothful, um, unprofitable servants are going to say, we did the full duty. He said, think, think not. Because the full duty isn't just doing the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is what God gave. Okay, go to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 to 19. It's all about Yeshua coming to teach the Ten Commandments. It was prophesied out of Moses' mouth. And that's why Yeshua says that, that he came to fulfill everything that Moses and the prophets said. So what Moses said is he's going to teach everybody what was taught on Mount Horeb. Not when they assembled at Mount Horeb, where the life-giving water came from. You can see this in 1 Corinthians 10 as well. Okay, Mount Sinai was where God came down, but they were way, oh, way far away, like 6.5 miles, where the life-giving water was coming out of, the, out of the ground. And they made a verbal agreement with God to follow the Ten Commandments. And he told them, don't touch the mountain, right? So they walk, after they got the verbal agreement, they walk to Mount Sinai, they break the Ten Commandments and sacrificial law was added until the times of refreshing when the Messiah was to come. That's the prophecy. And that's what he came to fulfill. And, the, and then nobody's listening to Moses and the prophets about what Yeshua came to fulfill. The other thing, it, when it talks about the covenants of promise, that's what you're supposed to hear in Ephesians chapter 2. So the two covenants, and he made it very clear that the rainbow covenant, which is not to, to eat the blood, for, for his chosen people, they're supposed to eat clean, okay? When you eat clean, it's a sign of obedience, and God reveals to you what it means. So you start to learn that the unclean beasts represent people's doctrine, okay? So by obedience, you realize what swine's flesh really means in people, and what evil, those uh, birds of prey, what it means in people. In fact, you can read the epistle Barnabas about this, and, and I... And, and rest assured, the Bible ain't lying because the, the chapters I was just reading, uh, Isaiah 66, read 65 and 66 about those people who are self-righteous that eat swine's flesh and the broth of all abominations is in their vessel, which is the temple, okay? They're going to be destroyed. There is smoke in God's nose and this is what they're going to say. I am holier than thou. You stand by yourself apart from me. We are better than you. you don't tell me you're... you're your doctrine, I want to eat piggy. That's the way they behave, right in front of our faces all the time when we warn them. So, so those are the covenants of promise. And when you do a word search, sister, I think it was a sister, put in a peculiar people. You know, a royal priesthood, it tells you twice in the New Testament, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, is those, especially in Deuteronomy, you, you'll see it. Do a word search on your phone. It's only mentioned, I think, Five, five times in the KJV. So if you got, I, some other versions have it, it more often, but in the KJV anyways, it tells you what a peculiar people is. They're going to keep the rainbow covenant and they're going to keep the 10 commandments. So that's what it is. A peculiar people, a royal priesthood. And that's, uh, and that's the way it's going to go down. It's uh, in, in Peter talks about it. And what did Peter do? What did the Messiah tell Peter to do? Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. These are the elect. 
Second, first and second Peter is 100% written to this generation. That's why you learn the day dawning in your heart. It's a more sure thing of prophecy. That's what he taught. He taught us when the Lord's going to return. The tarrying for 2,000 years. So he's coming right around the corner. We've, we have, you know, not 100% figured it out. But there is, well, if, 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 let's say it this way. I've said it this way before. If Jose Flavius Josephus wrote his, his um, account of when the temple got destroyed in 70 AD. And he writes in his, his uh, document that the Messiah was crucified 42 years before the temple was destroyed. So that was 20, 28 AD, which lines up because the, the Pharisees were Babylonianized back then. Okay, so that means their, their feast days were all over the place because they were on a wrong calendar way back then. Okay, that's why Yeshua says, you go to this feast. I'm here to tell the world that its ways are evil. It's not yet my time. See, they were wrong about their feast. That's why he did the Passover the day before the Jews did. Ever notice that? That's what, that's what happened because the Jews were wrong. But they did the Passover in 28 AD on a Wednesday. There's records for it. So we know that there's another... That's another witness and an evidence that Yeshua was, cru and there was an earthquake in 28 AD, so in the spring. So these are evidences that he was born, or he was crucified in 28 AD. He's going to tarry for 2,000 years, and then he's going to reign on his throne. So that brings you to 2028. Why do you think everybody's waking up right now? Many are called, though, and few are chosen. That's the first fruits, though. Other people are going to go through what their appointed punishment is. But the first fruits are going to have no guile on their mouth. So even the things that we're warning you about right now is so <coughs> when, when poop hits the fan, you're going to know what to do. You know, you're going to know to repent. And, and it will become very, very terrifying for a lot of people. And when, when the devil's cast down, by the way, their tribulation is only 3.5 years. The woman only goes in the wilderness for 3.5 years. The two witnesses only prophesy for 3.5 years. So all of that's only, the tr great tribulation is only 3.5 years. But the birth pangs have been going on for a while. And that birth pangs is about all of us rising up. But the man child would be born from the woman. And the church is the woman. Israel's the woman. Judah's the woman. The whole collective group of mess. It's a mess. Because the Chaldeans are deceiving the whole world. And that's the evil family written up. So they're deceiving, they're deceiving their own Jewish people. They're deceiving the Christian churches and the Catholic church. That's what your Jesuit priests are. They're, they're working for Satan. And they're riding Satan. Satan's the beast that's going to be cast down with the seven heads and the ten horns and all that. Okay? The devil gets cast down over the United States of America. The drunkards of Ephraim. That's your mystery Babylon. <clears throat> That's where the exodus begins. The second exodus. And none of your pastors are going to teach you about that. And very few rabbis in Judah are going to teach you about that. There's only one man that I know of that will teach that. And that's Monte Judah. And I certainly don't agree with his perspe perspective on prophecy. Because he doesn't under he's, for some reason he does not understand that the seven trumpets are given to the seven angels of the church at the seventh seal, and somehow he wants to overlap the trumpets and the, and the, and the seals. The seals are already opened right now. Like in fact, the four horsemen are, the, are actually the 144,000, but they're in, the angels that are in charge of them, and if you don't know what Ezekiel chapter 1 to 10 is saying, and in Zechariah 1 to 6, you're never going to understand the four horsemen. They don't do anything to the earth or the sea until the 144,000 are sealed. And they, they miss that. I don't know why they miss it, but they miss it. But I'll tell you, and I've already done videos about it. So you can go back and listen to the lesson and read the Bible yourself. That's the problem with most people that I, if they don't read the Bible, they, they don't understand how serious I am about what I do. And I know not very many people watch me, but that's, that's by a point, that's the way it's going to go. It tells you that. The seers are going to be very few throughout the earth that actually know what's going on. And that's why I'm rebuking these guys that, you know why I'm rebuking them? So they get on the same page because it tells you 
that all the watchmen will see eye to eye when Zion's about to return. So why am I rebuking these guys? So they quickly sit, tell the people to repent so that they're saved. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. So if you know these guys I'm talking about, then send this video to them because they are going to get removed from their stewardhood. They were appointed. Yes, they were. All of them. They would never know the knowledge that they have if they weren't appointed, but they're not, they're not, they're being unjust with their, with their father's goods. Okay. That's what they're doing. And they got to stop doing it. Otherwise prophecy wouldn't be written about that. You guys. And it very much has to do with covetousness. That's the reason why every one of the servants falls because of covetousness, because they don't feel accepted amongst their friends. So they won't say the hard things because they rather they, they're, they're, they don't want to get their heads chopped off. They're not willing to give up their life for the Messiah and for the people. That's the problem. They, they won't give up their business to go and do the work of God. You know, why do you think that guy, he says he follows all the commandments. But he says, well, if you want to be perfect, then sell everything you have and follow me. And he wouldn't do it. That's, the, that's a sign of covetousness. Okay. That's what he's talking about. It's the 10th commandment. That's where most people are going to fail. And the reason why is because commercialism is in our society being shoved down our throats by the devil himself for many years. And it's made everybody complacent and worldly rather than walking in the ways of God. And there you go. And that's the reason why. It's simple. It's so simple. But people don't have ears to hear because, and it's, this is the catch 22. They won't hear what I'm saying to them. And in a very short time, they're going to be, they're going to be freaking out for their life and they're going to hell. So it would have been better that they just gave up. And it doesn't mean to throw all your money in the garbage. That's not what it means. But it means you change your mindset and your heart about your money. And you put the word of God first over. I'll tell you right now. If you're somebody that has a bank load of money right now. I'd quit your job and start studying the Bible. That's what I would do. I don't have a boatload of money. And I did that for pretty much. Now I go to work. But... I sit at home, I'm able, would, because God has totally looked after me. Be why? Because I'm willing to do his work so he doesn't seek the kingdom of God first in his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. He has a way of providing for all of you, but that's what I do. That's what I do. For you. It's not for me. This is what happens to these evil servants. They're thinking me, 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 me. They count themselves to that number. It tells you in Isaiah 65. So, so the one sister, I don't catch all the comments because there's it's 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 too blurry for me to read, but I can catch the odd one, especially if it's short. Go and learn what the covenants of promise are by reading your Bible and do what what I suggested. There's I don't know if I've I've talked, I know I talk about it all the time, what what what's said about that. It's the most important thing. That's the only way you're going to receive the Holy Spirit of truth. It, it, Acts 5, 32 tells you that. This, and, this is, and, the, and the reaction of the people is, is going to be the same as it is today. Back then as it is now. Acts 5, 32. And because people don't listen. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to them who obey him. That's the spirit of truth, the second comforter, okay? When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. That's why I make so many people angry because I tell them obedience as well and they get furious. I'm sure that you've seen comments on here quite li likely that are, are very derogatory because they don't want to listen. They're, that's why it says, by the way, when I was quote, I told you to read Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 to 19, Acts, Acts uh, chapter 3, verses 19 to 26 is repeating what Deuteronomy said. And it tells you right there in way stricter, in the New Testament's even stricter language than in the Old Testament. And Peter tells you, everybody who does not listen to, 
to the Messiah who is going to come and teach what was taught at Mount Horeb is going to be destroyed from among the people. So it's right in your New Testament. I'll read it to you. I should have stayed there. I was only one, one, one page away from it. This is quoting... This is quoting Deuteronomy uh, 18 about the Messiah, the prophecy of the Messiah. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Yeshua Messiah which was preached unto you, before preached unto you, sorry, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution. That's the 2,000 years I was telling you about. So 2028 is a high likelihood. That's when he's going to be sitting on the throne. So back up 3.5 years and you're in 2024. That's right around the corner. Whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution. That's when he's going to make his feasts and his new moons and everything. That's when he's, he's the guy... Daddy in the sky is the one that's going to restore everything. When the times of restitution after, what does it say? The heavens must receive him until the times of restitution of all things when he restores his kingdom. <sighs> Which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord God you rise up. This is quoting Deuteronomy 18. A prophet shall the Lord God rise up out of your brethren, like unto me, him sh you shall hear in all things, whatever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. So what did he teach? Well, it starts off, go and read what Deuteronomy 18 says. That he's going to teach everything at Mount Horeb, not Mount Sinai. I judge no man by the flesh, he says. The flesh is sacrificial law. He came to teach the Ten Commandments and, and the royal law. Somebody sitting there talking about the Passover, you're not even allowed to do it. You're not putting difference between the profane and the holy. You're not allowed. You have to even tells you in the New Testament. Paul had to return to Jerusalem in order to do the feast. You have to return to Jerusalem to do the feast. That's why he didn't put he he didn't put that on the on the people. They can't see that. Anyways, I think I'm done. Have a good day. <laughs>